hi welcome to this final lecture of this course and in this lecture I'm going to show you how to render our character for your portfolio or maybe to show somebody or to no uh, in this case uh, for our no course image and those kind of thing so uh, to render we are going to render with you know IRA here so let's turn this IRA option So now it's warming up. You can see here it says IRA warm off. So give it a minute and it's going to turn on. Okay. So now you can see the IRA is rendering our character. So you can see basically you don't have to adjust on, you don't have to do a lot of stuff for a good render. You can just click and turn on it and yeah, you can use it. And here I'm going to show you some options obviously. So the first thing here you can see the lighting and we have uh, no some environmental lights. Now we have two tabs display settings and shader settings. If you go to the display settings and now we have again three, you know, three tab here. It's basically one single thing, but it shows three tabs. You can click here to go to the exact options. So when it's no environment settings is on, you can see the environment map here now it says tomoko studio it's by default here with this you know file so you can click here and when you click you will get lot of options here lot of available environment lighting so you can just click just look at the lighting here uh, although I, I know i like this lighting so let's see some other options so if i go and turn on any lights let's say this one the first one let's click okay now you can see it takes time to update and uh, it also takes a lot of time to render now you can see we have some strong lights here so that's why we have some strong shadows on the ground so it takes a little bit you no know, longer time so i'm going to decrease this max time you can see here it says to 800 seconds and so the more here you are going to get a good quality but it's going to you know take long time and you can see it's kind of taking 13 minutes something so we are going to decrease this value so let's decrease it and when you decrease it it's going to be a lower quality but it's going to render fast and now you can see this time you no know, went down to somewhere 19 or something so now it's you no know, quickly done let me drag make sure you don't make it totally zero it's going to again take you no know, long time when it's set to zero it's going to take its own time so let's you no know, put some value here maybe maybe five seven is fine in this case so now if i rotate the camera or the view it's going to render quick and render fast you can see the status it says rendering and it's going to say done quickly now you can see it just took uh, took eight seconds or something so now the render is fast obviously for the final render we need to you know, increase this value a little bit so that we get a good noise free render and once it's set let's check some different environment options so in this environment map you can see we have some other options so let's try it's kind of a little dull so you can go through all these maps and uh, to see which one you like in this case i'm going to use this this one this is called z dansk shipyard building something so let's turn on this and with this one we have a soft shadow on the ground you can see and the model is looking cool so you can use this or oh, let me go to the previous one let's see which one which one is looking good so previously it was using this one this is looking cool but i think i'll go with this one this this g dansk something okay it's a little bit soft side okay so go ahead and no, uh, choose your proper environment map which one you like you can use anything there is no wrong or right so it's just no different lighting condition 
okay so now you can see the it's rendering fast because we decrease this max time we change this environment map for different lighting and uh, the next thing i'm going to show you this you no know, ground option let's say now you can see i have a like a ground plane here so the character is standing on the ground plane and that is because i have i have this option here this dome type is set to spear with ground let's say you have different options like maybe infinity spear or spear so you are not going to you know, get that uh, ground plane for that so in this case i'm going to choose the spear with ground and uh, let me show you one other option and that is the blurriness of the texture uh, let's say you want to focus some area and you want to blur other areas so it's kind of depth of field effect so we are going to see that how to do this so we are going to this know this option this uh, camera setting option so let's go to that and here you can see uh, there's an option called aperture so if you increase this let me increase this so if you increase this this is the blur amount and now you can see it totally blurs the image and there's nothing in focus so if you want to focus let's say the face hold control and middle mouse click and it's going to uh, know okay this is the area to focus and it's going to blur the you no know, other distance area so now if i increase this aperture you can see the this area are blurry and no, um, the face area is quite no sharp this this area is sharp so you can create this kind of good looking images by using this aperture and control mid mo middle mouse way let's say you want to focus on the leg you can control middle mouse and now the leg are in the focus and these are out of focus so in this case i'm going to focus the face okay so it's quite good looking and and the next thing again you want to if you want to adjust the intensity of the emissive area you can go to emissiveness so that's here under i think that's under shader settings you can go to emissive settings and increase or decrease this intensity i think this intensity is fine you can see it's quite you no know, good brightness so i'm not going to increase it so let's click here and let's see so now it says rendering and one once it complete i'm going to save this image okay now it says done and let's see how to save this image so before you save and actually render you need to be aware of the in the render size so now it's rendering a odd size if you go to this area you can see the render size is set to 1920 into 1200 and in this situation i'm going to render my screen size which is you no know, 1920 by 1080 which is the 1920 sd 1080 sd size so now it's set to a different number so i can uh, change this number here so let's say 1080 and now you can see it update here and again it's rendering okay so let's render it okay now it's done once it's done we can save render or we can again share online so let's save this render and let me go to our folder here and let's create a new folder let's say final renders so and let's say something like let's image 01 and save it so this is the way to save now if i go outside and check if it's there now you can see it's there it's no it has a little bit noisy or low quality because of that max time we need to increase that but overall it looks very clean and good looking so let me close this and again let's go back to substance here so this is the way to create blurry you know depth of field effects and next we are going to see how to render some wireframe so let's say you want to render some wireframe 
and you want to so that for your portfolio let's say you have this and you have a wireframe render so for wireframe render we don't have any direct option for wireframe rendering here yet but we can you know do that we can uh, achieve that uh, with a trick so i'm going to do that so i'm going to get out of this ide mode for a while so let's turn off this and now you can see we are using that aperture so that's why i'm going to actually turn that off so let me go to go to the display settings and let's turn this aperture down okay so uh, we are going to see how to do the wireframe for that i'm going to use our maya uv and we are going to uh, create a emissive layer and we are going to use that uv black and white uv as a mask here so let me show you the process so first i'm going to create a emissive layer on top of everything so let's select the dot layer and let's create a new fill layer and that's going to be on top of the dot basically on top of everything so this is my uh, no wireframe okay so i'm going to make this layer emissive so i'm going to the material area turning off everything except the emissive emiss channel and let's give it a color which color you want your wireframe to be so put that color maybe maybe green or blue something like this okay so this is my no wireframe or the emissive layer fill layer we are going to create a mask black mask so basically it's now hidden the layer is hidden and we are going to bring that layer back with the uv lines so here i'm going to switch back to maya for the uv snapshot so let's go to maya and here is our no low poly character select it take the uv snapshot so let's go and uh, click on this little icon here and i'm going to take the uv snapshot here so let me go to the appropriate folder let's say that final render and let's say uv save and here uh, make sure the size is correct it's 4096 that's fine and here i'm going to save it in jpeg okay jpeg format and appropriate destination image size is correct okay so let's apply and make sure this is it's set to white it's set to white by default but make sure it's set to white and apply okay now the snapshot is done so let me go back to substance painter and let's uh, check the uv snapshot outside our software let's go to the file and let's see so here is our uv snapshot you can see the background is black and the uv lines are in white color so it's the by default of maya so uh, we are going to use this uv snapshot as masking for that emissive layer so let's see that how to do this okay if i go to substance painter here and here i'm going to mask uh, no paint that in the mask area so i'm going to create a paint layer for this so that i can paint that so let's create a paint layer okay that's good so we are going to use the drag and drop that on into this stencil area so let's see how to do that let's first import the texture here so let's go to import resource art source uv open this as texture let's import it to project here and import okay so now when i go to this project area it should be there the uv should be there here you can see so i'm going to drag and drop on this stencil okay now that is good we have selected this paint and i just dragged the uv to this stencil area and now i'm going to paint that on the uv uv area so let's go to the 2d view 3d 2d view or just the 2d view okay so just go to 2d view now you can see that is exactly you know aligned to this uv area so now i'm going to paint with my brush so let's increase the brush size and it might might be a little slow so just have patience and now i'm going to paint it you can see now if i paint 
it's going to lag a little bit now you can see i'm painting basically i'm masking and now revealing the actual emissive layer and i'm masking the uv white lines so just paint basically try to you know cover every area I try to cover the brush on every area you don't you shouldn't miss anywhere so that's why i'm kind of you now repeating that brush stroke on top of everything i think i have covered everything so now i'm going to go back to 3d view so let's go switch back to 3d view and let's uh, close this stencil okay now you should see the wireframe on the object and that is uh, that's inside this layer so we just use our uv as masking as a paint on the bla black mask now you can see we are revealing the layer the emissive layer in the uv lines and now if i go to render i did render I should see the UV lines and uh, it's it's an emissive layer that's why it's bright even in the darkness so uh, now you can see how to render UV you know uh, wireframe so this is a very good trick go to shader setting and adjust the emissive intensity to you know get the intensity let's say you want glowing lines you can increase the emissive intensity so let me you know, increase it you can see now you no know, glows even more now you can see beautiful looking uv lines so again let me decrease this down again we can use the you know, blur effect by going to this camera settings and increasing aperture and control mid mouse click for you no know, for the focus area basically so let's click here and everything else is kind of blurry okay so let's decrease this aperture here okay so let's save this image basically it's John for final render we are going to increase you know this max time a little bit for a better quality texture okay so I think we have covered everything here so with this we have completed the course and uh, you know we started the course with a very basic uh, head you know sculpting as a starting practice and then we went to the you know actual character sculpting inside Gbrush we learned a lot of you know, sculpting techniques there and then we uh, learned how to uh, read over the character using Maya Quadro tool and Gbrush and Topogon and then we move to uh, my UV unwrapping after that we see how to bake different maps using substance painter and then we texture our character so with this whole journey I hope you have learned something from this course and that is useful for your career so with this I am saying thank you for enrolling to this course and showing belief uh, in me and my course thank you very much for watching this course so I am going to see you in a new next on a brand new course until then take care and bye